Hey, weed nerds, just down here with the Strawberry Funk. And I figured I'd videotape this while I was messing around with it. If you look at the structure of these Strawberry Funks, really, really branchy. And what I want is more of a level canopy. So I'm going to actually take this, and I'm going to super crop this branch here by pinching it with my thumbnail against this part of my finger, like that. I'm going to pinch it, and I'm going to bend it over, and I'll work it a little bit, and then lay that down. And then I'm going to come over here to this top, and I'm going to take this top, and I'm just going to pluck that top right out of there. So now what I've left with is one that's super cropped over, and these two tops and what that super crop branch is going to do is slow down it's going to bend back up to the top and i'm going to try to level that and you can see here looking at the cherry gasm which is a very very stretchy plant you can see that i super cropped it and it literally went straight on me it started to straighten back up and defy my super cropping. So on the next one when I super cropped it, I got really aggressive. And how aggressive? Well, I almost snapped that one there. But if you look, look at that crazy thing. Boom, right back up to the light. And you can see when you look at it, I'm starting to work on a level canopy. And that's what I want. So I figured I'd show you that as I was kind of training up this strawberry funk. Show you what I was doing. Well, here we are with the other strawberry funk. And this one, if you look at the structure, I haven't topped this one yet. So this one, I'm just going to come in here. And I'm just going to take that and pluck that right out of there. And what that's going to do is allow these lower branches to catch right up with the top, and I'm going to start to build that canopy again. It's a good-looking plant right there. I like that one. Oh, my God, it's their first day outside. And I hope they like it. It's not going to be too intense. But they're going to be spending all day out here. And then they're out here from here on. Virtually no hardening off at all for these ladies this year. I don't think they're going to have a problem. That lemon stilton right there, that one came out yesterday morning. He looks great. Got the two Catalina wine mixer females. Three green ices. Black cherry haze in the back corner. Four cheeses in the center row. This row here, those are all the strawberry funks. And then the two cherry gasms. There will be a Nom Nom 2 and another black cherry haze that will join these. That palette right there, those, what will be 16 plants, are going to be the greenhouse ladies down in the main greenhouse. Those two Catalina wine mixers will be going here in the ground with any of the scarlet queens that are female and then i'm going to fill in whatever i don't get with nom nom two there's going to be six plants in this 10 by 10 greenhouse right in the dirt be strong girls Yeah, I wanted to add this before I lock this up. Um, if some of you are saying, well, why can't they go in? Well, that's because they have just come off of a 18-hour on night cycle. So typically these plants would be going to sleep at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But uh, now nah, they're jamming with 24 hours of daylight today. If they go back into the... Uh, into the veg tent, that light will be 
shutting off at 1 p.m. and turning back on at 7, and that's going to totally jack them up. So when I move them in a vegetative state and I switch a light cycle, 24 hours of daylight. Don't give them 24 hours a night. Oh, my goodness. Nope, solid day. They'll handle her, no problem. Recharge and water. Here we are in the flower room. It is Wednesday night and it has exploded. Totally filled in the whole trellis net. A little bit of a spot right here that's going to fill in, but that green ice will take care of that. But she's thick and I need to thin it out a little bit. If you look underneath, See if I can get down here. I'm moving really slow, guys. I did something to my knee yesterday. I've had arthritis in my right knee, but it's been hell just trying to walk. I couldn't even use the ladder today. So, looking down at the cover crop, it's thick. And I got some little scraggly branches like that in here. So, I'm going to basically clean up the undercarriage. Eventually, what I expect to happen with this grower, at least what I'm shooting for, is the undercarriage is going to be pretty much stripped clean from about the bottom here almost all the way up to this trellis and then when I flip them they should double in size and I figure they'll be oh, I don't know somewhere up in there and then all of this area in here I'm looking for bud sites so I'm gonna get busy thinning them up a little bit and then I'll show you what it looks like Well, I got the first half done, the front half. I'm about to wait, make my way around the back side and do the back, but I figured I'd show you. I didn't quite go up to the net, but I certainly did clean them up underneath. You can see the difference between the height of the clovers. Now I'll go around the back side and I'll do the back. Look at that leaf. That's a cheese. That thing is about twice the size of my hand. <laughs> Incredible. Right on. Show you when I get her all done. We'll be able to see straight across her. All cleaned up underneath. You can see straight across now. I've got all the clover cut down. And I did take the blue mats and I did turn them down one arrow. You can see this little dial. It's got little arrows on it. And I turned it down one arrow mark. Got a little wet spot in the back, right up against the back wall underneath where the pot's a little bit too wet. So I dialed all the blue mats down just a little bit. We're going to see how that goes. I think it might be just a little bit too wet. I think I'm going to do a little bit more work on that green ice right there. Then we'll call her a night. Well, happy Friday morning, weed nerds. It's about 8.30 in the morning, Friday morning, and I am in the upper greenhouse making holes. You can see I've taken one, two, three, that's 15 gallons out of that hole. And that'll give you kind of an idea as to what I'm dealing with here in northern Michigan. You got this top, like two inches of dark, and then it slowly gets gray, and then it goes right into yellow. And if you look down here where I'm grabbing... That's silica. That is straight silica sand. Very little organic matter in it. So what I'm going to do is take and fill the remainder of that hole with dirt out of those pots that's on its fifth cycle. And then I'm going to come back in with what's left out of these four 45-gallon pots. And I'm going to put a layer across the top and I'm going to seed it I'm going to throw some manure on it, composted from last year, and throw a layer of straw on it. 
So I'll have it all, the holes will be dug, and the whole entire thing is going to be cover cropped. That's where we are. I'm going to get some breakfast. Three holes dug. 15 gallon holes. Now I got to get the last of those buckets loaded up into the gator and then dig the other three. God dang, is it hot? It's like 82 degrees already. It's only 10:30. That's 585 pounds of dirt by hand. That's three. Three more to go. Peace. Alright, so when I say that we are nothing but sand all the way down, nothing but beach sand, I want you to look at this. That is nothing but silica all the way down. So, gotta come full circle. This is the old Gorilla Grow technique. Come out in the woods, dig a big 15 gallon hole. We come in, we grab our bag of dirt. We throw our bag of dirt in the hole. This is the dirt from one of my 45 gallon pots. I'm gonna fill the hole with it. Then I'm gonna take that little topsoil there behind the hole that I've reserved and put it back in the hole just to give all of the soil in these pots the opportunity to work with my natural biology that's in my topsoil here in the ground. So basically what I'm doing is I'm seeding this soil that I'm putting in here with my natural biology that I have here in my native soil. I'm just going to work this into the top couple inches. Just like that. Five down, one more to go. might outgrow me, but I am never going to let you outwork me. And that's why one of these days, I'll outgrow you. Until then, man. Peace, brothers and sisters. I'm dead. Holy shit. Six holes dug and filled.
one pot did two holes so those were roughly 20 gallon holes by the time I was all done although those pots aren't full that's the last one left and that's gonna go over the top and then I'm gonna rake in a little bit of my compost a little worm casting I'm gonna seed it and then I'm going back over the top of it with mulch there's the extra three pots I'm about ready to take that 600 pounds of dirt go haul it across the street and dump it Whew. it's hot all right guys we'll be back and check in on this in a little bit well it's about 655 lights are just about ready to kick on downstairs the upper greenhouse holes are filled I've taken the remainder of this 45 gallon pot and sprinkled it across the top and I am now going to go and take white Dutch clover and then a soil building mix from Pleasant Valley Organics. Um, I've had this for a couple years now. Uh, it's got vetch in it. It's got a uh, bunch of legumes in it. But it's designed to build, I see some sunflowers in there, it's designed to build soil in compacted soil. So these plants are going to either be nitrogen fixers or they're going to be heavy big tap roots like those sunflowers which are biodynamic accumulators. So very cool. I'm going to sprinkle this around, rake it in real light, and then cover it with some straw and then water it down. Isn't that the saddest thing you've ever seen in your life? Cannabis behind bars. I'd rather have the cannabis behind bars than me. But still. It's kind of painful. Looking healthy. Let me get this thing unlocked. We'll go in and take a look. Looking at the ladies. Healthy, 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 not a spot of PM. So no powdery mildew, no bugs. Clean bill of health, these girls are ready to go. So these are going to go in the main greenhouse. With two more that I have downstairs, probably another Black Cherry Haze and a Nom Nom 2. Catalina Wine Mixer, number 3. Catalina Wine Mixer, number 2. Those are my females. They will be going over there with the Space Queens. If you're wondering why I put those boards down there, I don't like compacting my soil when I walk on it, so I'll put some boards down between the rows. That way when I walk on it, it displaces my weight and doesn't compact the soil as well. Works out pretty damn well. That is not wood, that is the uh, one inch thick plastic decking. My father-in-law put a new deck on his house and he must have had 40 of those dudes. I took every single one of them. Looking good. <clears throat> Those two are going to hit the dirt soon. <laughs> Alright, say goodbye to the upper greenhouse and we will see this one next week. <clears throat> Peace. Alright, so here I am right next to the greenhouse. And I'm down here in what always has been the family garden. Now, unfortunately, this year, I am not going to plant it. I got way too much stuff going on. But I am going to work on the cover crop. And I am going to seed over the top of this mulch. And I am going to work on this for last year. But what I'm doing today is I have a basket of herbs. And just stuff that I found around here. Chocolate mint. Mm. 
plantain. Dandelion. And comfrey. So I took comfrey, dandelion, I took some mint, and I took some plantain, and I put it in here, and I'm going to make a tea. I'm going to take about three gallons of water, I'm going to boil it, I'm going to let it sit for about five minutes, and while it sits and rests for five minutes and cools down a little bit, I'm going to kind of chop that stuff up, and then I'm going to put it in the bottom of a stock pot, and I'm going to pour that three gallons of water over it, let it sit for 24 hours, and then I am going to put that in a sprayer and spray all of my plants. And I am also going to take it and uh, actually give it to them right directly as their next watering. So you can either do that direct. Um, this is not going to require any fermentation whatsoever. And this we're just locking up all those minerals and uh, all the good compounds in those medicinal plants. And we're putting them into that spray. I'm really interested in the mint. Because obviously mint is a really good preventative for pests. So I'm thinking I've got a little tea here that not only is going to benefit the plants from a nutrient standpoint, but it's also going to benefit them from a pest prevention standpoint as well. So really cool. If I had some garlic, I'd throw that in there too. <laughs> All right, I got a lot of fan noise going on in the background. I got the air cleaner running inside the tent here. But inside this five gallon bucket, I've got all of my herbs. I basically just kind of shredded them up. I'm gonna make about three gallons. I don't actually know how much I have put in this stock pot, but that is water that was boiling. It sat for five minutes. I'm now gonna pour it right directly over the top. Oh my God, that smells like mint. All right, that's about a gallon and a half, so I'm gonna go boil some more. And in the meantime, I'm gonna put this lid over the bucket and just let that steep. It's gonna sit for 24 hours. And then what I'm gonna actually do when I take and make this up, that labs, that lactobacillus that I made, Alright guys, this is how we're going to end this week on a big huge cliffhanger. Here I've got some of that tea that I made up last night. And I'm pouring 1,000 milliliters into this sprayer. That's that mark right there. So I'm just running it through a little filter paper. You know what this is. That's the labs that I made. And I'm adding one cc or one mil of labs to a thousand mils of my tea. Here, you know what that is. Ah, oh, shit, it's green cure. What the hell's going on? Experiment. We're going to try something. No, I don't have PM on my keeper plants, but I've been culturing it. One mil. Into the drink it goes. Top that off. I'm going to go pop this thing back in the fridge. We're going to take that, we're going to take that, 
we're going outside. In the front, Mendo Dope. Back corner, Jilly Bean. That corner, Lemon Stilton. Let me pull these off. You can see what I'm looking at. Yeah, taking one for the team. When these things popped up with a couple spots of powdery mildew down in the veg tent, I took them away from the rest of the ladies and I put them in the dark basement. And I basically starved them for, they got partial light. I dried them out. I basically tried to stress them as bad as I could so that I could get a good healthy dose of powdery mildew on all of these ladies. And I can think that we can all agree these things got the PM. So what's the story? The story is we're going to see how some natural sunlight and labs works compared to Green Cure. The Mendo Dope, Mendo Dope is going to get Green Cure. So remember, Mendo Dope gets Green Cure. Jelly Bean is going to get sprayed with labs. Lemon Stilton is going to get sprayed with labs. Those are the only foliars that they're going to get. But all three of them are going to get the labs and the tea into their soil as a soil drench. So, I'm going to take and spray these down. Put this camera back on the tripod. Spray them down. And then we're going to put them over here with the males. I am not scared of this PM, guys. I have been battling this shit for six months. I am battle-hardened. This does not concern me a bit. Matter of fact, I know as soon as I hit them with the green cure... All of the powdery mildew that you see on these leaves is going to die. Now, the taproot that's in the leaf, that's not going to die yet. I'm hoping to burn that out with the sun after just one application. Because the way this process has been killing this PM over the last six months is a spot application of green cure in my little, little sprayer. Every single time I see a spot pop up, I'll spray it. Whether I sprayed them this morning, whether I sprayed them last night, I'm killing it to try to burn that taproot out of that plant. And so far, as you can see on these plants, look where the PM is. The PM is on the lower and the older growth. Do you see any PM on the top of that Mendo Dope? Nope, you don't. Do you see any PM on the top of this Lemon Stilton? Nope. You'll see it here on this leaf, right here, but you don't see it on the very top. You don't see it on the very top of the jelly bean. It attacks the older, lower growth first, and it works its way up the plant from what I've been able to figure out over the last six months. So if I clone this top, very, very little PM in that plant. I can basically, by cloning the tops, I can clone myself right out of this problem as long as I'm spot spraying because all those ladies you saw in the greenhouse, they all had PM as clones and they have a clean bill of health today. So, experiment time, man. Let's do it. All right, looking at the Mendo Dope. Green Cure in my little spot sprayer. Got in every single spot of that plant. Just coming down underneath and giving it a drink of my tea and the labs. Damn mosquitoes.
starting to drain through a little bit. I'll let that soak for a minute, let that absorb into the rest of the peat moss, and then I'll hit it with another drenching. All right, now for the other two. They're just getting the spray. So, labs and a tea consisting of dandelion, comfrey, plantain, and chocolate mint. Yeah, a lot of you guys are going to freak out because I'm playing with PM. I am not scared of it. Not anymore. I don't believe that I have to sulfur burn. And I don't believe that I have to chop. And I also believe that anybody who says you do just hasn't worked at it hard enough or tried enough shit. If this labs works on these plants, I am going to be ecstatic. And I think the chocolate mint was a really, really good addition. It's one of the two principal ingredients in my uh, Method 1 PPS, mint and rosemary. And if I had rosemary, hell, I'd have used that too. All right. And they're going to go right down here on the ground. Under the little overhang here from the old chicken coop. All right, there they are. You'll have to tune in next week to see what they look like, but you saw them. And I am going to move those two dudes here into the shade and give them a foliar as well. Just so I can see how these plants react to this foliar before I go up to the upper greenhouse and spray the hell out of the ladies tonight. I'd like to see how these things like it. Could you imagine testing something new on all those greenhouse plants up there in the upper greenhouse and finding out that they get all tweaked out? That suck. All right, boys. I'll give some down here underneath. They don't need any water, but I'd at least like to give them just a little bit. Just so I can get some of that labs down there into the soil. Well, you'll have to tune in next week to find out how they liked it too. By that time, I'll know either, either I've sprayed the upper greenhouse or I'm back to the drawing board. All right, guys, you know what to do. Like. Share, comment, subscribe. I'm the Rascal Farmer. We'll catch you rascals right back here next time in the No-Till Lab. <laughs>